Hey friends, if you've ever wondered how to create a stylized email signature, but you don't know where to start, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'll be using HTML for this tutorial, and if HTML is not your jam, don't worry. Everything should be simple enough for anyone to utilize. I'm even going to give you the code examples that you can copy and edit yourself. To get started, I'm going to use my favorite text editing program, which you can see here on the screen. It's called Sublime. I'll leave a link down below in case you're interested in trying it out, and you can try it out for free. There are many tools out there that you can use. Dreamweaver is a great choice if you have access to the Adobe suite. You can even use online sites like CodePen.io, which is an HTML editor that will show you the results of your code in real time. Your best option is going to be using an editor that allows you to see the changes you are making. So step one, we need to get our HTML code for our email signature. Now, if you are familiar with HTML at all, you are going to see that this is a very basic table setup. If you're not familiar, I'm just going to walk you through briefly what's happening here. So we've got our table and the table tag here, it says that we've got no border and no cell padding. Those are what those zeros represent. The next item in the table is going to be the TR tag. So that stands for table row. So for every TR beginning and ending tag, that will equal one row in your table. So in this first row, we can see that I've got a TD tag. Now that stands for table data cell. So for every cell of data that you have will be in one row. If you have multiple cells within one row, then those will be side by side and they'll start to create columns. So in this first table data cell, I have an image and the image is structured with it comes from a source. So it's got to be hosted online. And then I'm dictating the width to be 100 pixels wide. And then I've, gave, I've given it an extra CSS style element and I've told it to have a margin of five pixels on the bottom only. So moving down for every beginning tag, you have to have an ending tag. So we can see that this is the end of that table data cell. And then now we're ending that table row we're going to begin a new row and then we're going to begin a new data cell. Now for this cell, I have went ahead and I put a CSS style in it and I said everything in this should have a line height of 1.5 M and that is just the spacing of the lines of text with inside of it. So if I wanted to have them closer together, I would decrease that number. I could have it at one. I could have it at 1.1 completely up to you. Totally a personal preference. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like here in a second. And then for every piece of text inside of it, I am using a span tag to style. It. So I've got my span tag and then within that I've got a bunch of CSS styles. I'm not going to go through every single one, but here's what I will show you. So this is just saying that the font size is 12. I'm selecting a color. Those colors are either the threes, which are a dark gray or this color right here, which is a bright pink. And then I've got my font family is set at Arial and then it's defaulting to sans serif if Arial isn't available. When you are making an email signature, it's very important to make sure that you're using the most basic fonts as possible because if you're using a custom font, the likelihood of it rendering on machines all across the world are very slim. So you want to make sure that you're using something like Arial. It could be Times New Roman. You can sort of figure out what those default fonts are. The first one listed is always going to be the primary font. And then if you have secondary choices, those will be listed after that with a comma separating each. And then it's finally the last one is always good to either put as serif or sans serif based on your font preference. Now, whether or not you want something to be bold, you can choose the font weight to be bold. If you want it to be uppercase, you can choose that to be uppercase completely a personal preference here. The lines of code here represent all the text content that will appear in my signature. But just because I put a line break in my code doesn't mean that there'll be a line break displayed in the content. In order to have a line break, I have to place a break tag, which I've done after my title of awesome human. And then I have two more breaks, one after both of the phone numbers and then the other after the address. What's nice about Sublime is that it color codes everything so you can see all the white content that is showing would be the content you would edit to show your own personal information. Other items you would address would be the URL if you're adding a web address, the image file for your brand, and any CSS changes you want. Once you have all the content in the cell, you will end that with the ending table data cell tag and row tag and then close the table with the end table tag. So you're probably curious, what does this actually look like? Let me show you. I'm going to pull my screen here. I'm just going to condense this over. 
I've got a browser open with my file and I'm actually using a program called CodeKit to render the changes as I make them so that I can see what looks good. So I have the image on top here and I've got my little Bogus Brands logo and I can see that all of the text is underneath. So this is one row and then this is our second row. I can see that my name and my title are on one line, all of the phone numbers are on one line, and the address followed by the URL. You can see that there are three elements that are different colored. So for that letter O for my office phone, the C for my cell phone, and the URL, those are dictated with a different span tag to identify a different color. So this looks pretty good, but if I have this code and I wanna make adjustments, it's really easy to do so. Let's say, for example, I wanted to increase the text to 14. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to adjust all of these font sizes to be 14. One more there. And if I hit save, it should bring up the changes over here. So now I can see that the text is a little bit larger. It looks good. If there are any other adjustments that I wanna make, I could do so. Styling your email address is completely up to you. Just know that you can use different CSS tags to make it look however you want. So let's talk about a few more things. What if we want our logo to be on the left-hand side? Let me show you that example. I'm gonna uncomment this code here and I'm going to hit save. And so in this table, I've got two data cells within one data row, so they are right next to each other, and that was what I was discussing earlier. And so now I can see that I've styled some things differently, I styled the phone numbers differently, I took some of the capitalization out of it, and we can see that the image is on the left-hand side. However, this brings up a great point. That image looks quite blurry, doesn't it? And depending on what kind of screen you're viewing this on, you may or may not be able to tell, but it's a little blurry and it doesn't look great. Why would that be? The biggest thing that I see people struggle with who are trying to create their own email signature is the fact that the images that they're using for their logo or their brand, they come out blurry and they don't understand why. So this image right here, and you can see the one that I'm talking about has this URL. I actually built this image to be 100 pixels wide and it's displaying at 100 pixels wide, but it doesn't look great. And that is because there's a thing called pixel density on retina screens, and it's going to make all of the difference in whether or not your email signature looks great. A lot of times people will be like, oh, I need a high res image. I better make this 300 DPI so that it looks better on screen. Well, 300 DPI is never gonna make any kind of difference. It's just gonna make your image larger. It's not going to actually affect the pixel density because in reality, when you're talking about screens, everything has a screen resolution of 72. It doesn't matter what kind of DPI change you make, it's not going to make any difference. The real difference comes in pixel density. We need to pack more pixels into the space that we're displaying. All this means is that you need to make your images slightly larger and then it display them slightly smaller. This could be anything as like one and a half times the size, two times the size is fine. In the example up top, I actually built this image to be 400 pixels wide. And so it's four times the size. It's still a pretty small image. You do wanna make sure that your image file sizes stay small because these images are being emailed and the bigger they are, the more they're gonna bog down your email. So I could have built that at 200 pixels wide and it, it would still look great. So do know the whole reason that you do wanna use HTML tables sometimes is not only can you control all of the styling of your text, and that's the whole reason we use inline styling. Putting all those CSS elements right next to your text within the table makes all, all the difference in the world because if you had an external style sheet, chances are it's it's gonna break the connection at some point and you're gonna lose all your styling. And the second reason you would want to use an HTML table is that gives you a little bit more control of where your image is being placed and the whole fact that you can control how big it displays and how big it was built, which is going to help the crispness of the image. So having said all of that, how do we actually get this code into our email program? Let me show you how to do that. 
you do need to make sure that you are able to view it in some sort of browser. So if you have an HTML file and you hit save, you can always view that file by just pulling it into any browser that you have, whether that be Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge, whatever it is that you use, if you pull it into a browser, you should be able to see it. And then the next step that you'd wanna do is just copy and paste it. So I'm going to com out, comment this code out really quick so that we don't see this anymore. And then I'm gonna hit save. So now all that we see is up top here. If I click into this browser and then I hit Command A, I'm on a Mac, but if you're on a PC, it would be Control A. So I'm gonna do that and it's gonna copy all the elements. And then I'm gonna hit Command C, because I'm on a Mac, but if you're a PC, it would be Control C. And now that it's copied, all I need to do now is bring up my email program. I'm gonna use Outlook, I'll do that right now. So I am in Outlook and I need to create a signature. So I'm gonna go up to Preferences. It's gonna open up this window and then I'm gonna hit Signatures. I'm gonna hit this plus to create a new signature. It brings up a box. So I could add a table in here, but the thing is is that I wouldn't be able to necessarily control the image display size too well. So I am just going to hit delete on that name and then paste my new signature in. And I can see that all of the same styling that I had is there. I'm gonna hit the close button. It'll ask me to save. And then I can give it a name if I want to. So I'll just give it a name. I can actually set it to be a default if I want to. So the new messages could be, well, it says untitled, but we'll see if that works close out of this and then new email and there it is. So now I have a completely styled email signature. So the next step is for you to customize it. So in the description of this video, I have a link to a blog post that has all the code examples that you need that you can copy and try out for yourself. And if you still feel tripped up on the programs to use, don't worry, there's so many online programs that you can even use. For example, I told you about CodePen. Let me show you that one real quick. So this is a free site and I am logged into my account and then what you are able to do is you have these windows where you can paste either HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and whatever you put within these windows, it will display and render out to the side. So I could put my code here, I could see all the changes that I made, and then if I was ready to copy and paste this, all I would need to do is the same process where I would select all and then copy and then paste into whatever email program of my choice. So I will leave a link to this site as well in the description if you are struggling to find a good resource to edit the code. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Or if you have a tutorial that you would like for me to make, you can request that in the comments as well. I'd love for you to subscribe and you can find more tutorials and information at michellethecreator.com. Thanks for watching.